What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I wanna to show you how we can bring in animated 3D characters and have them running directly inside of After Effects, just like you're seeing right here. So I have this full screen inside of After Effects playing right now, but let me hit the tilde key to come out of full screen. And as we can see now, we're inside of After Effects. So everything's inside the timeline here. And if I stop this and actually click on my character, you can see if I come down here, I can rotate it and everything is just working in real time inside of the viewport. Now, of course, to get that playback, you have to ram preview it, but I thought this was really impressive that I was able to get this density and this quality playing inside the After Effects viewport for a character rig. So let's get right into how we can set this up. So to get started, I'm gonna be using Mixamo. I'm sure most of you out there are familiar with it by now. We're gonna use everybody's favorite, the ninja character that we have right here. And I'm just gonna come over here to animations and let's pick out a different one before we had it dancing, but let's do maybe like a point animation. Let's, I like this one right here, the charge one. So I'm gonna select this one. And there we go, so charge. So he's gonna be pointing at the character or pointing at the camera, whatever you wanna call it. So I'm just gonna pause it and then we're gonna come over here in the top right and I'm just gonna hit download. Now, nothing too fancy here. We're gonna download as a FBX because that's the only options that we have anymore. I wish we could do GLTF, but you know, we have to work with what we have to work with. I'm gonna do it with the skin and I'm just gonna do it at 30 frames per second. So now I'm gonna hit download and we're gonna wait for that to download. Now we can't bring FBXs directly into After Effects. We have to make it a GLB or a GLTF file. And there's an easy way that we can convert that absolutely free. <laughs> so you might not have seen this coming, but I'm actually using Blender to do the conversion. The reason I'm using Blender is because the GLTF 2.0, it works really great for what we're trying to achieve here. So to get started, I'm just gonna select everything over here in my outliner in the top right. I'm gonna hit delete. And then I'm gonna come over here to file come down here to import, and then I'm gonna import in FBX. Now with my Blender file view up, I'm gonna bring over to my downloads where I downloaded it. And this is the FBX that we got from Mixamo. So I'm just gonna left click on this and then I'm just gonna import it with everything just default right here. Now that took a moment for it to import, but once it's done importing, this is what we have. Now, if you bring it in from Mixamo and you see it's gray like that, and that's because we're looking at the non-shading version. If we come up here in the top right, right here, click on this, we could come down here in the bottom right where it says texture and that should bring your texture right in. So don't fret if you don't see a texture, you just have to make sure you have it turned on within your viewport. So if I come down here and I just play it back, this is absolutely what we got out of Mixamo. So now we could just convert it to a GLTF file because that's what we're gonna bring in the After Effects. So I'm gonna come up here to file. I'm gonna come down here to export. And then at the very bottom, we have GLTF 2.0. So I'm gonna left click on this and I just made a 3D folder on my D drive there. And I'm just gonna rename this one Ninja. And then over here where it says format, instead of GLB, I wanna bring this down. And I'm gonna use the bottom one where it says GLTF separate. So what I wanna do now is where it says export, I'm just gonna click on this right here. And now we should be good to go. So now we're gonna open up After Effects and we're just gonna bring that directly into our viewport. So now I have After Effects opened up. I'm just gonna take the Ninja that we have dancing right here. I'm gonna delete him. And then we're just gonna bring everything in from scratch. So I'm gonna delete that. Then I'm also gonna delete the light as well. And now over here on my left-hand side, I'm gonna hold down the control and I'm gonna hit I for import. And now I'm inside my 3D folder where I saved everything out. So you can see we have our textures here and we have our GLTF file right here, the ninja.gltf. So I'm just gonna import that. And now what I could do is take that GLTF, I'm just gonna left click, drag it into my composition down here. And then that's gonna pop up with this right here. What I like to do is make comp size. So if I select this right here, that's gonna bring us to a good comp size. It was already there by default, but I noticed that some objects that I brought in were actually small. So when I hit make comp size and made it actually large enough for us to see inside our viewport. So once you're happy with that, we're gonna come down here and hit okay. And now I'm just gonna take the transform tool. And I'm just gonna bring it down. And you can see it's actually sliding through our floor here because everything is working in 3D space. Now, if I come down and hit zero on my keyboard, you can see we have our timeline down here starting to ramp up. And you'll notice that nothing's happening, right? And that's because we need to tell After Effects that our 3D character here does have an animation embedded into it. So we're just gonna select it down here inside of our timeline. So right here, our ninja.gltf. Then I'm just gonna select this to pull this down. And we have this right here where it says animation options. So I wanna select this and right where it says name under none, you wanna select that and that's gonna bring up this animation layer. And this is the animation that we got from Mixamo. So I'm gonna left click on this, 
and you'll see that our 3D file actually moved down here inside of our timeline. So I can actually move this up just a tad bit. Now scroll this back up. And now if I hit zero on my keyboard, now you can see the animation is playing and it's playing back pretty fast here. Like I know I have a pretty beefy computer here, but right now as we're seeing it, that's playing back in real time. Like it didn't take much time to RAM preview or anything. Really impressed with how everything's running inside the viewport. Now you'll notice that we don't have any shadows or anything down here, even though we have a 3D floor and we have a 3D character. So if I come back down here inside of my timeline and I right click and then come down here to light, what I typically like to do is add an environment light, but feel free to add any type of light that you want to. But I'm just gonna go with environment light. And then also you wanna make sure cast shadows will be turned on. It's gonna be off on default if it's your first time opening it. And then I'm gonna click okay. Now you can see everything's affected by the light. We have our shadows down here and everything is looking really nice. So if I come over here at the bottom where it says 3D render and I left click on this, I wanna come down here to render options and this is where we're gonna have some render options for our quality. So it's not gonna look clean like mine unless you mess with some of these resolution settings. So where it says full resolution, I'm gonna double it because I do have a lot of RAM. But not only that, we have to bring up the render quality. So I went to about 200, but I have a lot of RAM inside this computer. So I could go pretty high and not get any type of feedback. So you can see if I go up to 200, now we can see we're pretty clean. And with the preview turned on, we can see exactly what's happening as we go through these settings. So if I wanted to get crazy and go up to 300, which isn't necessary, I'm still getting instant feedback. But let's go down to 200 so we can RAM preview it. So I'm gonna hit okay. And let's say that before we actually hit the RAM preview on there, if you wanna just see what a draft looks like, if you come down here to where it says draft 3D, you could turn this on. That's gonna turn off the shadows and everything again. And then you can hit zero and that's gonna give you a faster playback. So you wanna make sure you turn that off before you render, but if you just wanna see what it plays back like inside of your viewport, that's the way to do it. Now, if I select the character, we're gonna get our 3D transform tools down here, of course, so I can move it around on the Z axis like so. We can just move it left to right on the X and everything is reactive. So you'll see that it's kind of grainy there at first, but once we stop, it's gonna fully render it in. Typically how it will work is of like Octane or Redshift, right? So I have to say all in all, I'm really impressed with these updates they've been adding to After Effects. I know it's been a while since I've done an After Effects tutorial, but now that we can actually bring native 3D files into After Effects, I think I'm gonna be diving in a lot more because I can see there's a whole plethora of different things that we could do now that we have 3D access. So let me know down below if you've experimented with this at all, or if this is your first time hearing about it, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So my name is Jonathan Wimbush. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in that next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.